We're going to kick things off with a game we've talked about a ton of times on Game Face, and we're probably going to talk about it a ton of more times, and that is The Last of Us Part 2, this elusive unicorn that it feels like we've been chasing after now for years and years, and it just when it seems like it's within our grasp, it just slips away again. Um, it has been delayed for a second time um, from its May 29th date to an indefinite date. Uh, that is not especially encouraging. The official word from Naughty Dog is that it's a logistics issue. Um, Matt, do you believe that, that it's a logistics thing, or do you think that they've just run the numbers and maybe the financials of it aren't working out right now? I mean, I think that is the logistics. Yeah. Like, that's that's the thing, is you can't... It's one thing to launch stuff like Final Fantasy VII this week because, like, the copies are already printed and in the pipeline and everything, but you're not... Like, the factories aren't running necessarily. You can't get mass, mass distribution in time, and frankly, people aren't going to be able to go out to stores and buy it, so you're going to have to push it back. And I know people are like, oh, it's released digitally. Yeah, that's not how anything works. So it, they need those those physical sales, because as we talked about before, you're probably creeping up on 50-50 digital physical right now, but you can't cut those th that 50% out and expect to make your money back on a game that probably costs $200 million to make. Uh, and it's not like just... You know, oh, something wrong with Last of Us because they also delayed Iron Man VR. The same yep, thing. They did. So, yeah. This is this is how it's going to work. Like this is you know Sony's job is to make money for themselves, and that's that's the end of it. Like they cannot. It's just like how Marvel can't throw out the Black Widow movie on Disney Plus. You can't spend two hundred million dollars on something and just just give it to somebody. Like you can't. Uh, that's not how any comics works so yeah this was expected to me um especially once governors started talking about how like okay probably two months probably may maybe june uh in terms of the lockdown um my guess is we will see last of us two probably near the end of the summer so you, you don't think it's that far away then depends on when the lockdown stuff eases up i mean who knows? you saw that they like, refunded all pre-orders for the game sony did mm -hmm. what does that tell you they, that tells me they had to take it off the store. So they no longer have that entry on there and everybody gets their stuff back, basically. Um, and also it tells me that they don't know how many copies they're going to be able to print in terms of the physical pre-orders. Like, they, they don't know if they can meet that demand anymore, which I think is why the physical pre-orders, including the collector's editions, are being refunded. I mean, who knows how long it'll take some of the factory stuff to spin up again and if you'll ever be, even be able to get the, fa the, the, pre the collector's edition goodies made. You know, that's not going to be priority by any stretch of the imagination as industry starts to come back to life. I think another um, thing even is if it's, you, you got to think about is Ghost of Tsushima probably will be pushed back if if they're wanting yeah. on Last of Us Part 2 to launch before it like it's intentioned. I don't know also, I mean, that. if Ghost, if if Ghost of Tsushima slips, like no, if Ghost of Tsushima slips, it'll be because this extends and they can't get the copies of that printed either. Like, yeah, it's I mean, not because it's not like the movies where they're like shifting everything back. That's not going to happen with these two games. The only reason it would be delayed is, is if, like The Last of Us Part Two, they just can't manufacture enough of them. That would be the yeah. only reason. But if you can't um, manufacture The Last of Us Part Two, can't you not manufacture any Ghost of Tsushima? Like, wouldn't they? Wouldn't the priority be first to do manufactured discs for Naughty Dog's game because it was supposed to? Come not out if you first? don't have to move the schedule. If the schedule for Ghost of Tsushima production can be stay on track because the Chinese factories or whoever overseas factories are spooling back up again, you don't rearrange that schedule just to rearrange it for the sake of that. Like you're still selling the last of us part two in the same financial year. So you basically find the opening and they would probably have the opening later to mid summer because they don't seem to have anything scheduled for August right now. Thanks for the bits, Mick Womble, by the way, I see him there in the chat, man. Appreciate it. Um, to me, this really shows just how important the launch window is. I mean, Sony's oh, yeah. basically saying that we're not confident that if we don't go all in on day one, we're going to sell enough of this game. Um, they could put it out digitally, but mm. for whatever reason, PlayStation seems to think if you don't do that dual-pronged approach with both the retail and the digital at the same time, that it could somehow be detrimental to the sales of the game. But I, I don't know if I'm seeing that logic. Do you think that that's true, Matt? Of course it is. Yeah. Like, half the sales of these things, if not more, especially on these mainstream hits, are going to be physical. Things you pick up in Walmart, things you pick up at Best Buy when you see them 
I, I get that, but do you think that coming events, out they digital have, they have will keep people from buying physical later, though? I think so, yeah. Yeah? I mean, it, it doesn't keep you the word. You know, they want to keep that. I mean, Sony obviously is changing their scope of things with not going to E3 and all the, and keeping quiet and da 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 But the tried and true method of the dual prong assault and the word of mouth being like kind of critical mass. And like, even if someone buys something digital, like I would, if I tell my friends up North, how great this thing is, they're going to go buy a disc. They don't buy it digitally. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I think Sony's very wary of short circuiting that cycle um, because that cycle is still a very real thing. Even if digital sales are creeping up. Um, my my remaining litmus test on this is going to be if Nintendo still puts uh, Xenoblade out, mm-hmm. um, which I think they probably will. Like I think the cartridges get made earlier than the discs, um, so they probably already have those done. I mean, but, a lot of uh, it depends on where their manufacturing is. You know, what country yeah. the bulk of their manufacturing is in. Japan has been lucky; it hasn't got hit especially hard. But not all Nintendo's production happens in Japan, so. No, I don't think their a lot of their physical production happens in Japan, but we'll see what happens. I feel if they thought there was a chance that that was going to slip, they wouldn't have put it in the direct the way they did. Um, also, that that gives it May twenty ninth all to itself, which is probably a good thing for the for for Xenoblade. But uh, we'll see what Nintendo does moving forward. Yeah, Matt, when do you think we're going to see this game? I mean, you said you think late summer is what is that when? If if the lockdowns get eased and things in in this and another second surge doesn't spike by July, which is very possible if everybody sees oh we're free and everybody goes and goes to the fucking club and uh, doesn't pay <laughs> attention to what this is, you know, like it's going to be very interesting moving out of this and if people can kind of control themselves uh, moving forward and not like short circuit the whole thing by mass gathering for no good reason. Um, you're going to have to take it slow. We're going to have to be very careful about, you know, some kind of antibody testing. There's a serum test for that that's in production right now. I got approved last Thursday. That'll be a home test, like a blood, like a diabetes test. Um, so that, like, there's going to be a thing where you're going to have to prove that you're, you're immune, basically, to be out in public on, on a regular basis. Um, if that can all be worked out and controlled and we don't, like, make, all our, make ourselves sick all over again by July, I could see like a limited form of industry coming back and Sony being comfortable launching it in August or September. Um, the other option, of course, is just to delay it until the PlayStation 5 comes out to ride that hype wave, which is not impossible, yeah. but that would be a worst-case scenario as far as I'm concerned in terms of this game. What are the drawbacks, if any, to having a game that jumps around release dates like this? So it had two dates, and then it's delayed indefinitely, and then you refund the pre-orders... Do you lose any momentum throughout the course no, of all this? Not for this game. No, this game's bulletproof. Um, I, I also don't think the first delay matters that much because it was just sort of a date they put down and the, and the, the, the core demographics knew about it, but mainstream didn't. Uh, canceling the, the date this close and refunding pre-orders and pulling it from the PSN store, like that's interesting. Like that's yeah. something I don't think we've seen before. Exactly. Um, so I'm just so, wondering, like, what kind of impact that has. But I, I, think, I don't think I, I don't think, think it has right. anything. I don't think anyone's yeah. going to not buy this game because of that. That was interested before, and anybody that was only vaguely interested or might buy it once they find out about it doesn't know this happened. So, it's uh, it's pretty bulletproof. Um, I think if they can get it out before the PS5 launch, that's probably smart because that's one less thing to buy at launch. Um, I, think I do you, think there's a chance that what you said happens, though, that they just yeah, get to the point where they're like, you know what, like, let's just wait and we'll just release yeah. it for both systems on the same day. They have the time to like slap on like a PS5 enhanced mode for it and yeah. you can sell it for both and just like it's another thing you can sell the new system on the back of. So yeah. not impossible. It could happen. They Especially have time now. Because <laughs> Naughty Dog said the game's basically done, that they're squashing yep. the last couple bugs left in the game. So now they actually have time, and I'm sure they'll do more polish because that's what Naughty Dog does. But now they have time to maybe do a couple other things, like maybe get it ready for an impressive PlayStation 5 uh, debut yeah. as well. So Also, like I've seen people that's it's like, oh, it's because they don't want to release something about a post-apocalyptic thing in the middle of this. No, <laughs> they, they also delayed Iron Man, which is <laughs> it's not, it has nothing to do with content. <laughs> It's you know, I'll say this, like I haven't found that pop culture content based on end times, apocalypse, outbreaks. They haven't really like unsettled me like I thought they might mm-hmm. because of what's going on. But 
they haven't really impacted me any more than they normally would have, which is weird. Pa- watching no. Pandemic the first Although time was. I will was say, uh, um, I watched. Uh, I did a little Marvel. What? Everything froze up for a second there. Oh, I've got you still. Um, the uh, I, I watched a little Marvel marathon. Um, did uh, Civil War, Infinity War, and Endgame. And I will say this: watching Endgame now is a very different situation. Uh, there's some there's some very interesting moments in that now that we've kind of done through gone through this and like, uh, but it didn't like affect me in anything. But I was like, oh, I different things jump out at me about this now. Yeah, you didn't pick uh, up on it when you watched it back when. Yeah, before all this started, it's just crazy. <laughs> it's I like don't the whole to interrupt the conversation, but Sony just posted the PlayStation Five controller. It did. Uh-huh. It's on chat. There's a link there to click on. I already looked at it. Interesting. It's There's a link in chat. Okay, there's let's a take a look. I chat. wish I could send a video to you so we could put it up. Unfortunately, I can't. Huh. Oh, wow. I mean, that I can run to the studio and try departure. to pull it up on the screen and do a shared screen or something, but um, that's the only thing. Well, I whatever do. goes on that screen will be shared. We'll just, we can maybe edit it in, but I'm sure everyone in chat's looking at it right now. Wow. It looks completely different yeah. it looks like that you is melded a massive a, change an xbox controller with a playstation controller a bit no it's yeah, still it's... got the sticks in the same place that's what's I'm the same place, but the, to the grip the shape so, is very the shape. the shape is very xbox yeah yeah they it's got rid the of like the, yeah, it doesn't have like the prongs the defined prongs yeah it almost looks does. like a mad cats version of a controller it does yeah but it does look futuristic i'll say that do you think the do you yeah, think the console is going to be color. white to match the controller? Because the controller is very white, not black like usual. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. very possible, or it's possible they could have you know two color combinations at launch. Who knows? Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's been done PS5, before. PS Five a zebra control a zebra console. Does it have? Yeah, and this is official. This is a PlayStation blog, so this isn't some kind of fooey. Um, no. Interesting. Huh? Breaking news: This game face happens. Live from home. And it I says wish we could it show it to you guys. Incorporate a- adaptive triggers into the L2 and R2 buttons with dual sense, so you really, really feel tension in the action. So yeah. HD rumble. And it says that the dual sense works along with the Tempest 3D audio tech, which is what uh, was featured for about a third of the tech presentation for PS5. Yeah. Also a built-in microphone. Yeah. It looks good. I like it. It looks different. Yeah. I mean, it's still got my biggest complaint about the PlayStation controller remains that the sticks are parallel, uh, so that doesn't fix that. But uh, yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. I've got used to it at this point, so I can use both with with equal uh, skill. I think at this point. But I mean, there I'm you just, go. They're just never going to change it. It's this too. That's kind of an iconic thing to them. The final thing I read on here already. It's saying that there is a create button. So they're expanding the share button to offer a create button. Um, which will be new ways of players to create epic gameplay content. So I think this is interesting because if you look at, I follow I follow Corey Barlog on Twitter, and people send him all the time God of War kind of shot cinematically with some sequences of moves that they do, whether that's like Kratos did a slash with the axe and then he did a dodge and then a finisher, and they kind of played with the camera angles to make it cinematic. I wonder if this is kind of response to that to give people more features to give that ability. I think they just renamed it because they're gonna add more stuff to it. (laughs) Honestly, (laughs) I I think it's as simple as that. But, uh, because I think that streaming, because, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if a camera is built in as a PlayStation 5, uh, so streaming is going to be mm-hmm. something that people can just do. Um, and so I think, you know, that button being changed just represents that it's going to be for a lot more than just like saving a screenshot or uploading a video to Twitter or whatever most people do with that. That's what I do with it for the most yeah. part. But, so. but I will bet you that uh, whatever their initiative on how that button works and the stuff you interact with and the people and what they do with it are going to be called PlayStation creators. Well, I'm sure. I mean, it's better than influencers. <laughs> yeah, anything's better than that. Yeah. Although influencer is, is better than EA game changer. Let's also yes, let's, let's yeah, <laughs> I'll agree with that as well. Uh, so there you go, breaking news live on Game Face episode two zero six. 